Welcome, family and friends. This week we have been hanging out in the parable of the sower. And as we con consider the importance of growing in Christ, of having our lives be fruitful, having them be fulfilling, having them filled with the freshness and the flavor of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We have been unearthing principles, practices, precepts uh, that will help us in our growth experience. We don't have to remain frustrated or dissatisfied with the results we are seeing because in his word, God has given us the answers. Today, we are going to take a really good look at the good soil, the good soil. Just as a brief recap, we learned this week that the sower who went forth in Jesus' parable to sow seed was a professional. He had good seed, and present on his entire plot of ground were four different types of soil on the same plot of land. There was wayside soil, there was stony ground, there was thorny ground, and now we're going to talk about the good ground. We're turning to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and we are picking up in verse 8 of that chapter. Then we'll go a little further down and later in the chapter to talk about those who receive the good seed and the good ground on verse 23. So that's Matthew 8, first looking at verse 8, then verse 23. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And that's verse 8. And jumping down to verse <clears throat> 23, He who received the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and Psalm 30. I'm always encouraged by this verse of scripture because it tells me that no matter how dismal or frustrated I may be with my experience, there is always some good ground. In your life and in mine, there is good ground. God has made it and ordered it so that there is something good about you and something good about me. There is some trait of character, some desire or longing that is after him that he pronounces good. Yes, you may have wayside soil that you need to work on. Yes, there may be stony ground that we need to work on, removing those rocks, those hard places. Yes, there may be thorns that threaten to choke the life out of your spirit and out of your soul. But God is telling us here today that there is good soil. And everyone who has good soil has the potential, the potential of bringing forth a bountiful harvest. Now, here is what I find really interesting about this passage. The Bible says that the others that fell on good ground yielded a crop. But notice what happened. Some portion of that good ground yielded a hundredfold. Some portion yielded 60 and some 30. In other words, as I look at this picture, I am seeing that God is saying what I'm able to produce from your good ground can, in a way, compensate for the ground that was not up to par. Have mercy. So the results we are getting from the portion that is good can supersede and can overshadow the undesirable ground. And that's encouragement for somebody today because while God is working on us and pruning us and preparing us, he is allowing enough beauty to emerge from us that will eclipse the things that are undesirable. Very interesting, a very powerful point. Another point we find in this parable as we look at the good soil, recognizing that in each of us there is good soil is this that some of the soil yielded different amounts mm. 
there was a hundredfold, there was 60, and there was 30. And if we understand the principle of life and of growth in the natural world, we will understand that in nature, everything goes to its, its maximum potential. For example, how tall will a tree grow? The answer, as tall as it can. Uh, how, how long will <clears throat> the river be? The river will be as long as it can be, right? Uh, when you think of how far or will, will the wind blow, it will blow as far as it can. Everything goes to its natural and fullest potential. How high will the grass on your lawn grow? It will grow as high as it can. Everything in life goes to its fullest potential. And so it is with the good soil of our hearts. God allows it to be so that when we receive, and as the Bible said, understand the word that we receive and apply it to our lives, then we bring forth a harvest. The important thing is for us to go to our full potential. Go as far as we can go. Do as much as we can do, not holding back, but putting our all into it. This is really important because as we consider uh, the natural world, those uh, things that are programmed, the plants, the animals, they do what they can to the fullest of their ability. We as human beings have the power of choice. We can choose whether to go all out or whether to hold back. And Jesus is teaching us in this principle of the good soil that we should go as far and as hard as we can. Why? Because the harvest, the results depend on how much intensity we put into that which we are called to do. Holding back doesn't hurt anybody but ourselves. And here is the next temptation that we are often faced with. Sometimes before we decide to go all out, we look over to the left and to the right to see what other people are doing. And we gauge our effort and our intensity on what we see others doing. But this parable tells us that the soil didn't look to see what the others were doing. The soil simply did what it was supposed to do, produce. You and I are called to produce. In Genesis 1, Jesus says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. God says, produce, multiply. And, and so we are called as human beings, as God reveals his will to us to do the best we can with all that we can for his glory. Holding back is not a part of our mandate. And we are encouraged not to look to the left or the right to see what others are doing. That's not our business. Our business is to take what God has given us and to allow it to come to fruition in the most powerful way possible with us giving our all. The good soil. Today, each of us has good soil. Each of us has potential. We are not to feel that our 30 is less than another person's 100 fold. No, that's not our focus. We are to bring what we can with what we have to the honor and glory of God. And God in his own way can transform your soil so that what is now only producing 30 fold as we uh, receive his word, as we gather his word, assimilate his word and apply his word, it now becomes ground that produces 60 fold by exercise. And the ground that is only bringing forth 60 fold today, uh, as you continue to give your all, God is able to transform that ground into ground that produces a hundred fold. It is not in looking at what others are doing, but in giving our all to the work that God has given us and applying his principles that we are able to produce astronomical results. 
And so today we are encouraged, as each of us has good ground, let us seek by God's grace to maximize our potential and the opportunities he's given us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today that you have not left any person destitute, but there is so much good in each of us by your grace that we are able to produce fruit to the honor and glory of God. Else you would not have sown your seed, your word in us. So we thank you today for this opportunity. While we hasten God to make improvements in the areas that we are lacking, may we also be grateful for the areas where we are fruitful. And may we maximize our fruitfulness by giving our all to your work, to your cause, to those you have given us the opportunity to serve. God, may we not withhold anything, but may we cast all upon you knowing that you care for us. We thank you for this blessing and this privilege. Continue, God, to multiply the good in our lives for your honor and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.